Well, everybody, here we are a couple of weeks before Christmas, and Intel's got a little Christmas gift for us, I guess. That's because they are now rolling out their Battlemage GPU architecture into a brand new graphics card called the B580, and is going to retail for $250. Now, what their intent is here is to really shake up that budget GPU market. But not only that, this is something really exciting for me because it gives us something to talk about in a market that we haven't had anything to discuss for the longest time. Look, it's been more than a year, I think it's now, since the last major GPU launch and two years since the last major GPU architecture. But look, I want to give this video some context because while we've had an ARC B580 for a few days now, the actual review will be out on December the 12th. Meanwhile, availability for these things will be December the 13th. Still, I wanted to sit down and talk about about its positioning, pricing, and what makes this thing tick. Because for a lot of people, all things that have been ARC related have pretty much dropped off their radars. Plus, like I said, everybody should be excited for what this thing can bring to the budget GPU market. So first things first, it's all about the price. Now I'm gonna give you a couple seconds to think back in time. When was the last time that we saw a $250 or thereabouts GPU launch from AMD or Nvidia? Well, guess what? It was the RTX 3050 and 6500 XT. Now, neither of these cards were what anybody would call great value for the consumers. And they're still not very well thought of, but that was almost three years ago. So what Intel is doing here is offering something into a market that has been empty for quite a while now, other than cards that have had their prices slashed. And speaking of which, we can't forget that at $250, there's a lot of competition from slightly older GPUs that have seen their prices get cut lately. The RX 7600 and A770 16 gig have been hovering at or below that point for a while now. And the RTX 4060, that's also started heading south of $300 too. And while the B5 580 technically replaces the A580 in Intel's lineup, it actually costs a whole lot more, pushing it closer to what the ARC A750 launched for. And look, it's obvious this is not an entry-level graphics card by any means, but it does fall right into a nice budget-focused price point. If you still need something less expensive, there's also going to be an even more affordable ARC B570, but that's only coming in January. From a specification standpoint, what you get here is pretty straightforward. While the ARC B580 actually gets less XE cores than its predecessor, core clocks are way, way higher, while power consumption stays pretty much the same. And to me, that's a significant accomplishment. Basically, a 5-watt uptick for what should be a 50% or better improvement in frame rates. There's a few other things to call out here too, like the B580 might have 12 gigs of memory, but the A580 actually used a 256-bit interface, so its overall bandwidth is higher. There's also been a slight display output revision with a move to DisplayPort 2.1 and the addition of XAVCH to hardware accelerated media. Another thing that needs mentioning is this card's running on a PCIe Gen 4 x 8 interface versus the A580's by 16 connection. And while this new card might have fewer XMX engines, each one of those has been thoroughly revised from an architectural standpoint. So Battlemage has an overall higher raw tops output. More importantly, Intel's new XE2 architecture underpins this core design, and we already know how good it actually is. On Lunar Lake laptops, it offered absolutely massive performance increases over the original XE design in Meteor Lake. And in this implementation, Intel is claiming XE2 can offer 70% better performance per core and up to 50% better performance per watt versus the XE cores that were used in their Alchemist series. But the big story here, in my opinion, is that huge memory footprint. It's so unique for this price range. There's 12 gigabytes running at 19 gigabits per second, and that's paired up with a 192-bit memory bus. And that's a big deal when you consider the competition is typically hooked up to an 8 gig interface. Oh my god, is there another one? It is kind of funky though. The new Tower 600 is now appropriately sized for ATX systems with the usual panoramic 3 glass view, 420 RAT support and 13 fans can be installed. <laughs> Good luck. I really like the rich I.O., especially with the flexible USB 3 adapter. The GPU can be rotated for extra funky presentation. Access is easy all around and the vertical airflow should be a nice compliment. And the optional base for lay flat mode is interesting indeed. Check out the Thermaltake Tower 600 down below. And while there are some games, yes, that will take advantage of that 12 gig memory interface, even on a budget GPU, especially when RT is turned on, there are two markets that are just 
unbelievably hungry for VRAM right now. And that is AI processing and some creator workloads. So while the B580 might end up being a really, really good budget option for gamers, I have a feeling that many of these cards are gonna end up in the hands of folks doing on-device AI workloads or those looking for a budget-friendly option for Premiere or Resolve outputs. So what we have here is a card that seems to be heavy on the memory and relatively light on the price. But there's a little side story to that. And this card represents a significant price jump over its predecessor, the A580. That $250 might have been free and clear a couple of months ago, but lately there's a lot of competition sitting directly around it. So where does the B580 ultimately land? Well, according to our conversations with Intel, their target is to make this new card an A750 killer. I mean, sure, this is according to their own internal numbers, not ours, but this is pretty much in line with what we'd expect a generational improvement to look like. So there's really no huge surprises here. It also happens to fit perfectly with Intel's GPU messaging. They want to become the price performance leaders and getting on average 24% higher frame rates than the more expensive A750, well, that's a pretty huge step in the right direction. They're also gunning for the RTX 4060 with overall improvements too, supposedly on average of about 10%. But there's something else I want to draw your attention to here. The original ARC series really never supported DX9 games all that well. And it looks like the ones with the least amount of improvement here are, yep, those popular DX9 titles like CS2, League, and Dota 2. I also happen to notice that Rainbow Six Siege, it just isn't here. It's conspicuous by its absence because every single time that we see one of these charts from Intel's CPU side, Rainbow Six is there. What Intel is really looking to do is draw in those people who might have bought a GTX 1060 or 1660 for 250 bucks back in the day and want to upgrade to a similarly priced card with significantly better performance and at least some form of ray tracing capabilities. For them, the uplift would be absolutely massive, but you also have to take into account the B580 will chug back more than 50% more power and likely also dump a ton of additional heat into your case than either of those older cards. You might have noticed something else about those numbers that Intel is showing. They are only showing 1440p results. Meanwhile, $250 GPUs, typically you get 1080p performance. That is their target. Their target is 1080p performance. And I think I know why Intel is doing that. That's because a 12 gig card will have a significant advantage in certain titles versus the six and eight gig cards that typically make up this price range. And look, they might actually have a point here because recent Steam hardware surveys have seen a reduction in the number of 1080p screens being used alongside a general trend towards higher resolutions. But how much of this trend is actually being driven by the desktop space? I have to wonder because the laptop market is becoming hugely influential in these numbers to the point where the RTX 4060 laptop GPU actually has a shot at becoming the most popular graphics card right now. And on the mobile side, at least, there really aren't many laptops being launched with 1080p displays anymore. Meanwhile, 1440p and 1600p are almost the de facto standards on gaming laptops, which might be artificially increasing the overall proportion of 1440p users out there. But you never know. Another thing I wanted to mention is how the B580 cards are going to be rolling out. Because look, Intel does not have a lot of board partners. So they are going to be launching this card. You can buy it on December the 13th, along with whatever other board partner designs are available. This is the so-called limited edition. And we already know from the A series cards that a limited edition is probably not all that limited to begin with. But personally, I think this is the card that most people will go with. That's because it uses a sleek, compact, stealth black design. And since the PCB is so short, there's a flow through cooler layout. I actually think this is one of the best looking cards around, but if you're looking for one that's a lot more flashy or ungodly huge, well, there's gonna be something for everyone from Intel's board partners. Just don't expect them all to hit Intel's $250 starting price and don't expect all of them to be widely available either. Another thing you might've noticed is the b 580s powered by a single eight pin power connector. And that might affect people with older systems hoping for a simple drop-in upgrade. And that's because there's still tons and tons of amazing older power supplies out there that people are still using in their systems, but they don't have eight pin power connectors. And this card will not come with a dual six pin to eight pin either. So you're going to have to go out and buy one of those. I also wanted to slide in a little mention about some updates to XESS. And look, I'm not doing this any justice because XESS2 deserves a whole video on its own. And that's exactly what we're planning. But essentially, other than the usual upscaling, the second iteration will 
will also include native frame generation or XESS FG and a low latency mode called XESS LL. So basically Intel is now offering what AMD FSR and Nvidia DLSS have been doing for a while. And it was absolutely time they stepped up because frame generation might be good to have on higher end cards, but it's absolutely critical for GPUs like the B580. Meanwhile, XESS LL does exactly what it sounds like it does. It lowers overall latency to improve game responsiveness. And even though the features living under XESS 2's umbrella are all backwards compatible with first generation art cards, Intel will be fighting a big uphill battle for game support. So far, there's only 10 games that'll fully support the full gamut of XESS 2 features. And we're told there will be more announced soon, but at this point, XESS 2 really can't be considered a selling point for these cards. Anyways, that pretty much sums up everything that we can tell you right now about the B580 before the review goes live next week. And speaking of that review, I'm, I'm pretty excited for it because we have some really unique testing coming up for it. Either way, I really gotta say this. While the B580 might not be the high-end GPU many people wanted from Intel, it might be the GPU we all needed. I'm hoping it gives us enough performance to make PC gaming even more accessible. And if it does that, we've all gotta celebrate. And in a year that every bit of Intel news seems like, I guess, bad news, I hope this little GPU provides a silver lining and a positive spin, maybe, as the year draws to a close. But we're just going to have to see that in the review. Anyways, I'm Mike with Hardware Canucks. I hope you enjoyed this little preview into the B580, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.